Hello and welcome to today's YA book chat. Um, today I have two books to tell you about. Um, both of them are available on Owl to Go as ebooks or audiobooks. Um, you can visit Owl Owl to Go. It's owl2go.owl.org um, to or overdrive owl.overdrive.org and you can browse the selection on there and you can also download the Libby app and add your library card and search on there. So the first book I'm going to tell you about is one that's always available, which means even if somebody checked it out, somebody else can also check it out, which is different than many of the other audiobooks and ebooks on Owl to Go. So this one is always available, which means there will be no wait time if you want to go check it out right now. Um, it's called All Things New. It's by Lauren Miller. It's about um, a teenage girl named Jessa who has an anxiety disorder. She's had one since she was, I think, like 12. Um, since I had my cat. Since she was 12 and her parents split and she just really has intrusive thoughts and she can't, um, she really can't deal with her anxiety disorder. So what she does is try to hide it. And that goes all right for her for a while. And then she has, she's in a terrible car accident and that leaves her with some brain damage and it, it scars up her face. So I think she also, this brain damage makes her have hallucination. So she really can't hide her anxiety disorder anymore. Um, and then she ends up moving to a different state to be with her dad and trying to heal and kind of start a new life. She makes friends and she dabbles in dating. And it's a really good look at anxiety disorders. I, I really think that I haven't read it yet. Um, I've read parts of it and I've read a bunch of book reviews about it so I could talk about it today. But to me, it sounds very, like it has a very realistic um, showing of anxiety disorders and panic attacks. Kind of like John Green's book, Turtles All the Way Down, which I did read. I think that one had a good description of anxiety and panic attacks. Um, so yeah, if you want to read that one, check it out on Owl to Go. I wanted to read just a little excerpt. I have it, see, I have a little, the audio book or the ebook on my phone. I'm going to read a little excerpt of it to you about her car accident. This is the beginning of chapter two. Time fragments, milliseconds split, then expand. Arrested momentum as my trajectory changes. Pressure bearing down on me, swallowing me up. Pain explodes in my left temple as the side airbag bursts through the ceiling. My neck snaps sideways, torso wrenches, the seatbelt holds. The window beside me is sucked inward, a vacuum of pins and needles on my face. The pressure recedes and I am flung to the side again, caught in a spinning, violent whirl. My head slams against the airbag and lights up with pain. The sensation erases all the rest. Spinning, I am spinning. My brain jostles inside my skull. Through the spider-webbed windshield, another car catches me in its headlights. The car that hit me, a car hit me. I spin again and a tree comes into view. In the eternity before impact, I see Alexis and Wren. Alexis's cheeks streaked with mascara, eyes puffy from crying, a funeral inappropriate dress. Wren, dark suit, somber face, pretending he gives a crap that I'm dead when he, when really he killed me 10 minutes before I hit this tree. Rage goes off like a bomb inside my gut. God, you cannot let me die. The other car comes into view again, farther away now, and then the tree. Then metal connects with bark and I slam against the headrest and the spinning stops. So I'll stop there, but I'm definitely gonna keep reading this book. Um, 
the other book I wanted to talk about, this one is not one that's always available. So what you'll have to do is place a hold on it, just like a regular library book and wait till somebody returns it. And then you'll get a notification in your email that it's ready to download. So this book is called Internment. It's by Samira Ahmed. And what it's about, this one I read, I really, really enjoyed this book. It's about a teenage girl named Layla. It's in the set in the United States in the kind of the near future. And her and her family are, are Muslims. And they are forced into an internment camp. Um, so she, they're, they are living this normal life and then there's a census and the people could choose to check off what their religion was. Her family chose not to, den to deny that their faith. So they checked off that they're Muslims. And based on that, the government kind of rounded them all up and placed them into internment camps. Um, the internment camp is basically a bunch of like RVs, trailers uh, that inside a Basically, it's like a prison. Um, they all have meal times and guards and all that kind of stuff. Um, so she's, most of it takes place in the internment camp. She makes new friends in there. Um, she has a boyfriend who's on the outside and she really um, has to, to fight to try to rebel against what's going on. So I have part of that book I wanted to share with you. This one I'm going to read right off of my computer screen, which is another great way to read um, ebooks and audiobooks from Owl to Go. So this part, this is part of chapter one. She's hanging out with her boyfriend. Our phones beep at the same time. I check my screen and a wireless emergency alert flashes. One people, one nation, Tune in at 9 o'clock p.m. for the President's National Security Address to be broadcast on all channels. It's a reminder about the weekly speech tonight. Two weeks ago, the President's speeches became required viewing. All other programming on television and radio stops. The internet doesn't work. The text of the speech scrolls across phones. Technically, I suppose you could turn your television off, but my parents keep it on with the volume low. My parents are too afraid now of making mistakes. Can you believe this crap? The alerts are supposed to be for like missing kids, not speeches from bigots. David shakes his head and squeezes my hand tighter. I really have to get back, I say. The bonfire will be over soon. People will be walking home. I think of bumping into Mrs. Brown, her squinting eyes. My mom will die if they catch me. David takes a step back. His jaw clenches before he speaks. Bonfire? Let's not use euphemisms. They're burning books in the school parking lot. They're effing burning books. My mom's a damn professor and she's going along with this. And my dad, both of them, really. I know, I whisper, it's my dad's books, his poems. My voice cracks and tears fall down my cheeks. I brush them away with the back of my hand. They're burning his poems. He pretends it's not happening, but those words are him. He's trying to hide it, but I know it's killing him. Both of my parents, all of us. Is this how the end begins? It's not the end of anything, he says, especially not of you and me. Sure, right, as if your parents haven't forbidden you to see me. It's my dad, he's being a total a-hole. And my mom, she's going along with him. I think she's too terrified to speak up. Part of me thinks I should say something, tell David that his parents aren't so terrible, but I can't, I won't. They stay quiet, using their silence and privilege as a shield to protect themselves. We'll fight this. People will fight this, are fighting, David says, trying to reassure me. I know he thinks he needs to be strong to make it seem like he believes his own words, but I don't think he buys it. I can tell from the way his smile curves down at the edges. I can tell because his left hand is balled into a fist even as his right arm envelops me. 
I nod and give him a grin that doesn't reach my eyes. We accept the lies we tell each other and ourselves, I suppose. And it's one of the ways we are surviving day to day without going mad. At least this isn't pretend. I nestle into David's chest and he kisses the top of my head. When we first got together, I thought it might be weird to date a friend, someone who'd known me so long. The first time we walked through the school doors and down the hall holding my hands, my palm was so sweaty it kept slipping away from David's. He held on tighter, knitting his fingers through mine, kissing my forehead when he dropped me off at my locker. Easy, natural, kind, like we were something he always knew we would be. There's rustling outside the window. Our heads snap up. A bright LED beam dips back and forth across the lawn. David raises a finger on his, to his lips. I don't move. I can't move. My heart pounds in my chest. After an eternity, the light goes out. You've got to get home, David whispers to me. I'll walk you. No, it's too dangerous. It's more dangerous for you. I look at my watch. 17 minutes past curfew. What was I thinking? We clasp hands and tiptoe to the door, slowly open it. David sticks his head out first, then whispers back. It's okay. No one's out here. I take a deep breath and step out. That was close. Too close. This was foolish. Perfect, but stupid. We race across the lawn, an acrid burning smell heavy in the night air. Over the tops of the roofs, a column of smoke still rises, higher now than before. Blackish gray wisps of words and ideas and spirits. A burnt Corbani descending into heaven for acceptance. I can't tell if the tears in my eyes are on account of smoke or grief. Stop! A voice like sandpaper yells from behind us, flooding the darkness with a cruel light. We keep running faster now. Go, David shouts to me as he slows to swivel around, pulling his hand away from mine. I stop, almost stumbling over myself. I can't leave you. David pushes me into the darkness. It's not me they want. Run. And that's the end of chapter one. I hope that these little snippets of these books have interested you and made you want to check them out on Owl to Go. Remember, internment is one that um, once I return it, it'll be available, but somebody might be checking it out based on listening to this. Um, so that one, you'll just have to place a hold if it's not currently available. I believe the audiobook is also on there too, if you prefer to listen that way. And All Things New, the first book I talked about, is always available. So there'll be no waiting or anything. All right. Um, thank you very much for coming to this book chat. Have a great